Hello, today's episode is going to be about media queries and how we can tighten up our Webflow projects in certain circumstances, so stick around. Future Sam here, uh, just consuming some rays out in my garden. Um, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because this morning before I started editing, I actually found something really cool that I didn't know existed in media queries. So stick around to the end and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the episode. Sometimes we'll encounter like a design um, that, you know, using the, using the, the selectors at the top of your Webflow project for the screen width, sometimes there'll be a sort of quirk where it just won't look quite right at certain breakpoints. Welcome to today's episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. So media queries are a way of changing the style of our websites uh, based on certain circumstances. The most popular one being is the, um, is the browser width. And you'll see this on our Webflow projects just at the top here. So the way, the way we're able to change the style in these different viewports is under the hood, what's happening is, is Webflow is creating uh, media queries and it's saying for this one, for instance, it's saying anything above a certain uh, threshold needs to look like this. In fact, actually there you can see affects nine, 999 pixels and below. So it's actually the threshold and we'll get into that in just a second. Media queries just don't affect the screen widths though. As we'll get into, they can affect various other things like orientation, uh, color, color contrast, weird things like that. Um, there, there, are, there are a lot of things that, that we can do with media queries. So what do media queries look like? Well, we start by typing the letter at, and then we can type media like that. The next thing we need to specify is the media type. Okay, in most cases, we're gonna use screen because we're gonna target things with a screen. But what you can also do is use print. And what this will do, when you print your page, you can apply cer certain su styles and things like that if you're printing, and, and you can do that by hitting Command P or Control uh, P in uh, Windows, not too sure. But if we, if we hit the print, um, apologies, but if we hit print, then we can affect certain, certain styles and certain things like that. So if you're working with a website that um, actually needs to present sort of invoices or, or needs to look a certain way when we're printing or a different way to what the website looks like, then we can target it here. Speech is the other one. Won't be using this that much. This is to do with screen readers and various things like that. Um, but what we can also do is write all, okay? And that covers all of them. Um, you can also omit this completely and it will also target all. So in our circumstance, you can go media all, and we, we open up our brackets, and then we type the media feature. So in this circumstance, I'm gonna go min width 700 pixels, okay? And then we open it out, and then we can just type our styles in here as we, we can type anything we want in here with regards to styles. So, what this is saying is on all screen types, or again, we can admit, omit this completely. On a min width of so 700 pixels and above, I want to make the body copy red. So you see that's turned to red. And then when I make my window smaller than 700 pixels, it will go to black, which, you know, we haven't specified anything here, so the default is black, but it would fall back to whatever we've defaulted. So that's media queries in a nutshell. What else can we what else can we do with this? So there are actually 35 different types of um, media features that we can add. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, unused and um, very rarely used. Some of them are actually used, and I've I've got a I've got a web page here which I'll share a link in the description of different types of ways we can target specific browsers. So only. IE 11 and above will read this. So if you want to target just, if you want to apply style to just um, browsers with IE 11 and above, you can use this sort of um, selector. But um, this, this, there's the media query for selecting IE 8 and above. So you can use MS high contrast none and MS high contrast active. And then you can write CSS that only targets IE 10 and above. And there's another one here for IE 9. So there are certain weird, um, quirks that, that you can use with media queries to target certain browsers. And I'll leave that link in the description just so you can have a nosy. If you need to support specific browser, you need to write certain style for certain browsers. 
For instance, I needed to, uh, recently I needed to create a website which um, Flexbox doesn't work on IE8, but the but the browser needed to support IE8. So just in IE8, I, I I made a certain wherever there's a grid, I made those um, those elements float rather than use Flexbox, and I did that with the media query hack. So like I say, there's actually 35 different types of uh, media features, and you can see them all here. We'd mostly be using sort of min width and max width and various things like that. Um, but there are there are certain things like orientation, so we can do in here we can say orientation go land uh, scape. So whenever whenever um, a a screen is in landscape mode, then we can uh, then we'll color it red. But then when it goes to portrait, i.e., when the height is more than the width, so we'll make we'll do that now. We'll imitate a portrait mode. There you can see that the color has, has fallen back to the default. So you're overriding, um, you're overriding whatever you've set all the defaults with a media query. Uh, similarly, you could say so portrait, and then when we make when we make it portrait, this should go red. There we go. So why would we need this? Um, Portrait and landscape is, is a sort of obvious one, but a, but a way we can use this in our Webflow projects is sometimes we'll encounter like a design um, that you know using the using the the selectors at the top of your Webflow project for the screen width. Sometimes there'll be a sort of quirk where there'll be um, it just won't look quite right at certain breakpoints. Uh, in certain breakpoints. So if you identify what that break, break point is, and we're just gonna make this up right now. So say um, there's a weird quirk between 701 pixels um, and um, max width uh, 725 pixels, right? I've had this before, I've had this before. Then we can say that the, in this scenario, we'll just do body color red, but this could be the, the font size. This could be a font size of something. This could be the layout of something that is just not quite working at this breakpoint. So what you can see, we've got nothing. Um, in fact, if I go to the um, the device thing here, we get a little, we get a width here. So if we, what was our CSS? If we get this, uh, how do I, I want to change this to responsive. Uh, if I get this to 701, make that 701 then you can see that it's red and if and then as soon as I get to that 725 it goes black so you can you can really affect those weird edge case things just with media queries there hey guys so I said that I found something I thought was quite cool regarding media queries just this morning so I've, I've bolted it onto the end of the episode and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I uh, I did because I've wanted to find this um, how out how to do this for quite a while. So this is an article uh, by Sandrina Pereira, I think her name is, um, and she's talking about. It's an interesting article. She's talking about how um, there's a confusion between um, drop downs, select boxes, and menus, and things like that. So she she does well in the article to describe the difference between um, all these different things. And then she goes on to how to create a an accessible and user friendly select box um, that uh, functions really well. And I'll leave a link to this article in the description. But one thing that jumped out to me is that there's actually a media query for detecting if an, a hover event exists. So this is interesting because um, in the context of her article, she's creating drop downs. And if if a user is on like a touch screen where they can't interact with a drop down in the same kind of way, um, then present them the sort of native um, select box. I've used, I've actually used the wrong uh, terminology there that she's saying not to do. So what she's saying is that if there's a hover event, then show our um, bespoke uh, select box. Whereas if there's no hover and a user will most likely prefer the native um, 
select box functionality where where you've got like a wheel or whatever on ios then actually hide our custom select box so i thought this was really cool and i think it would be interesting to um, think about this in our webflow projects what we want to show to people who have mouse support versus when they don't have mouse support so i hope this is uh, useful to you um, and yeah so there we go that's a quick look at media queries and what we can do with them um, and hopefully if you, you can use them in your website project just to tweak it and, and sort of make edge case scenarios look a little bit nicer. If you haven't subscribed already then please do so and if you want to be notified where I release these episodes every single week then hit the bell notification icon. If you have any questions let me know in the comments I'll be happy to answer them um, and of course if you have suggestions and want to cover next then please do suggest them and I'll try and cover them uh, and until next time happy no coding. I suppose it doesn't work so much anymore because we're coding now.